Today we're looking for the ruins of the old Fuller Mill. It's located in Jamison, near the area that was once known as Grenoble. Alexandra and I decided to go there on a whim, without any prior planning. When we arrived, we ran into the owner of the property, Steve Kemp, who turned out to be the nicest guy, and who promptly agreed to show us the old mill. This photo was taken in May of 1899 and appears in a postcard by Arnold Brothers. By the time the picture was taken, the mill already appears to be abandoned and dilapidated for many years. The mill was established around the year of 1717. It was complete with a mill race, mill machinery, a water wheel, a workshop, and a large stove. I'm not exactly sure where exactly it was, but they would dam up part of the creek over there and the water flowed through this area and that's where the water would actually turn the water wheel through the mill. Now, the only wood that's left is what you see above the doorways and that's pretty much it. If you go down the end of Walton to where the noble goes to the right, behind the little cottage down there in the woods, there's a rock face where they actually started a quarry and I believe that's where they sourced a lot of the stone. Today, it's just a crumbling shell, but at its prime, it was a place of employment for a group of ladies who allegedly lived on the property during work days and went home on the weekends. You can see, you can see like about this height on the other side, you can see where the holes are from where the beams used to be, mm -hmm. the actual uh, joists that went through because there was the, the first floor and then the second floor That's was right. upstairs. Yeah, you can see from the other side, the, the chimney's actually over here to the right that warmed the building, pretty cool. You can actually see in the corner, it snakes up the wall. I don't know if that was built that way for support instead of being straight up and down, but it's, when you look at it from the other side, it's wild. I don't know why they would have done it that way. Here on the right, just take your time, watch your steps. Thank you. Yep. Right here, you can see the firebox, where the firebox was. And then if you kind of use your imagination, you can see that it goes up about four feet and then it kind of goes left into the middle of the building. And you can see where the chimney's still at. You can kind of see a void where there's a hole up there, about two and a half, three feet above that, that spot. It's incredible. Some of this thing is actually barely holding on to each other. I mean, they're supporting each other. Yeah, when you look at that top above where that window was, that's just wild. It, it, look, it looks like the wind just will blow and just... It, it, it's, it does. Insane. That one rocks keeping it all together. All those yeah, cut outs this, right there. That one over there, that one always intrigued me because that one is so low and then you can see the header above it. See how low that one is? That's where I thought maybe something came through the wall at because the, the waterway would be on that side. Because you can't even see on this side that arch. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, I mean, this mill has been built a while back, so it's possible at some point they converted it to something else. Absolutely, it could have been repurposed, yeah. <laughs> it might have been a, yeah. even a living quarters at some point. Most people are familiar with grist mills and sawmills. Fewer people, however, are familiar with fooling mills, as they became obsolete early in 1800s, when they were replaced by newer technology in textile industry. The fooling mills were powered by water diverted from a river, in this case, the Nishamini Creek. The water's force drove the blades of the wheel, which then turned an axle that would activate the set of hammers called stocks. The stocks would drop in sequence to pound the cloth in the vats below. The fooling process would thicken the cloth by matting the fibers together to give it strength and increase waterproofing, creating a material we know as felt. This house yep. did not have power until 1955. They lived in the dark for a while. Come on, Come on. It's a beautiful house. Thank you so much.
Another mill stood just half a mile up the road, known as Old Ross Mill. The Ross Mill was in operation till World War I. In 1952, it fell victim to a fire set by an arsonist and it was ultimately torn down. Eventually, the bridge was also removed. <laughs>